All right, we are back with Mo Vaughn going deep here as he joins us each week. Uh, Mo, we've talked a lot about Bobby Dahlbeck with you. Uh, and, and this is a guy you and Jim Rice a couple weeks ago really broke down when he's flying open, when that foot's getting up the line, third base side, how tough it is. Suddenly he's more compact. 321 over the last eight games. He's made some nice adjustments. What have you seen in Bobby Dahlbeck here over the last week or two? Just staying through the ball, realizing that his power is dead center, staying on the ball, staying on the breaking ball, understanding the pattern of how they're getting him out. And when he's, you know, the main thing about hitting is if the pitcher's going to go out there and make pitcher perfect pitches, you're not going to hit. But you have to hit the mistake, and he is pounding it time and time after again. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited for him. But the main thing is he's just get your sights out in the middle of the field, stay down and through the ball. He's already got power, doesn't have to do too much to juice it and just get through it. So he's doing great. Now, and now we see the back end of the lineup starting to produce, right? The bottom third of the order starting to get involved. The heart of the order has been cranking all year. Rafael Devers now in the middle of the lineup. He's still so young. Uh, Sunday's home run, a great example of how strong he is. Uh, what do you see in, in Rafael Devers? Such a good, young, strong left-handed hitter. I just see so much ability. So much that he's going to learn and get better at just by walking to home plate consistently. <clears throat> this guy walks to home plate 600 times. He's going to hit for 30 home runs and driving 100 runs. And then his 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 ability to get to the ball, his ability to hit all types of pitches. This guy's a three 300 plus you know plus hitter. So he's just got tremendous ability. He's showing that he's going to get he's going to learn the strike zone even more. Hits the ball to all fields. But this guy, I don't know what you call it, potential or which, whatever you want to call it. But I just think walking to home plate the next, this year, next year, he's going to really blossom into a, to a great hitter, which he already is now. Mo, we've seen him get to pitches eight to ten inches off the dish. When you're talking to a young player, how do you coach him through that? Because he's the type of player that can get to those pitches, but the fact that he can get to them can hurt him late in the game. Guys are make, making pitchers pitches, and we see him sometimes as a young player kind of expand the strike zone when he should be shortening a little bit. How do you go about coaching a young player and, and having him change his mentality during certain points of the game? Listen, we want him to be able to get through those pitches. The fact that he can do that, is outstanding because when it gets nasty, when it gets in the playoffs and guys are running that ball off the plate and you need to stay there and stay balanced and flexed and through the ball, he can do that. It's just now that, and that's what I say, walking to home plate and understanding how to drive in runs, he will eventually learn how to shrink his, shrink his strike zone and not be offering at any of those pitches. And then he just becomes completely devastated. But I'm glad he can do those things to be that big and be able to be that flexible to, to hit those pitches is a great thing. Within time and with him getting older, he will understand what exactly they're trying to do and, and spit on those pitches and, and take those pitches, and it's going to be even make him even devastating later, later, later on and later in the year, later in his career. But it's all about walking to home plate and getting those at-bats under your belt. Still only 24 years old. Absolutely remarkable what he's doing. All right, Mo, we've played a quarter of the season here. It's very early, but start to look at this team and figure out what they're all about. Who's your MVP a quarter of the way through the season? I got co-MVPs. I had it just, you know, Rafael, but I got Barnsley also. I mean, for him to come in and take on that closer's role and be as, as, as strong, as consistent as he is, I think both of those guys – really deserve to be the co-MVPs co at the quarter of this quarter of the season. Um, you know, you know about, you know, Sander Bogart, and you know about J.D., but Raphael is one of those guys that you didn't know about, you heard about him, and he's coming up with a lot of great two-out hits to break people's backs in ball games. So I think those two are the, are, are the ones for me. Who do you got? I'm going with Bogarts, and this is a, this is a pretty cool thing because Mo Vaughn actually went with a pitcher, and here I am. I'm going with a position player. I'm going with Bogey only because of what he does offensively, what he can bring to the table defensively, what he brings to the clubhouse as well as a leadership role. Everybody's talking about Bogey being the face of the Red Sox, and, and it's a relatively young team, and they need a little bit of a leadership role. I think he's really taken to that, and he's run with it.
All right, well, those are good choices, and the beauty of being the host is I don't have to tell you who I'm thinking. I can just prove you guys right or wrong towards the end of the season. Mo, good stuff as always. We appreciate it, my friend. All right, you guys have a good week.